Okay, so welcome back to my Loki reviews. This one is episode, season two, episode three. And it starts off with, now they've been doing this every um, episode. They've been taking the Marvel theme and making it like it would sound in a specific year. And this one is the ragtime version of the Marvel theme because ragtime was really big in the 1890s. 1890s through 1920s, I think. Ragtime was very popular. So, um, so yeah, I quite enjoyed that. I'm a big fan of ragtime. So, um, it starts off with sort of where it ended up last episode they're back in the room that controls the time loom and ob is just still consi consistently freaking out that we're all going to die god i love him and he he because he needs a way to hack the system in order or something some way to get into the system to keep the time loom from just going poof now obviously whatever mobius and loki did what helped loki but it did shit for the time loom so um he so they decide that they have to find Miss Minutes. And the way to find Miss Minutes is to find Renslayer. Um, so they do that. Or at least it seems like they did. Because then you see Renslayer in 1868 in the Sacred Timeline. And she's just like, this cannot be right. Obviously, she had never gone that far back in time, so she's completely clueless as to what she's seeing. And she just assumed that Miss Minutes would want her in a place where things were, I don't know, more sanitary? I don't know. So, Miss Minutes was hiding in a barn. Gets Renslayer's attention. She goes into the barn, and the plan B for he who, he who remains is for Miss Minutes and Renslayer to go back in time and to give young he who remains, at least I assume it's supposed to be him, a young version of himself the TVA handbook kind of to jumpstart his um, creative process to, I don't know, create the TVA or to fix whatever caused him to get killed in the first place. I don't know. I don't know why they would want to change, why he would want to change his own backstory, which he, which you know he did because when, um, Loki and um, Mobius came to that same same moment. They then immediately went to eighteen ninety three and the World's Fair, and because um, they didn't find Renslayer, they're on the they're on the case looking for Renslayer, so they go to eighteen ninety three. And, um, oh yes, and before they did this, Miss Minutes, because Renslayer told her that she needs to blend in, that she, you know, that she can't be seen, because, like Mobius pointed out, she's a, and Loki, she's a cartoon clock. <laughs> I mean, that's not inconspicuous at all. So... So, um, she becomes black and white because somehow 
that makes it better. It just is amazing how, you know, nobody seems to think that this is weird at all. So, um, Mobius and, and Loki are looking for Renslayer, and this kid, this little kid, now this is a branch timeline, so obviously whatever, um, he who remains, um, plan was, was to create a variant of himself, which must have just stabbed and Ravona's heart because she has this thing against variants. That was her whole thing at the TVA, that variants are bad. We must remain in the sacred timeline. Well, you just, you and he who remains just destroyed that. So, <laughs> anyway. Um... So, this new Kang is more of a con man than anything. It's not that he isn't interested in creating the TVA or controlling time. It's just that at this moment, he's a con man. And, um... So, Renslayer, Mobius, and Loki are all trying to get Victor Timely's attention and to go back with them. Now, why Renslayer and Miss Minutes wanted him to come back, I don't know if they wanted to just take him back to the beginning of the TVA, because I do not think that they initially wanted the same thing that Mobius and Loki did. So, Victor Timely does his presentation about the temporal loom, and um, Loki, when he first sees Victor Timely, because remember, at this point, he wasn't looking for a Kang variant. They were looking for Miss Minutes. And Loki's like, oh, wow, that looks just like, that's him, that's a variant of He Who Remains. And, um, and Mobius is dubious about that. Now, this is where they've already diverged from the comics. Because in the comics, Kang originated from the 30th century. It was just one Kang. And he just had different personas in different um, eras when he went back in time. This Kang was actually born in the 19th century. And, um, so he's giving his presentation, and then everybody, a, bun a bunch of people, I should say a bunch of people, want to, um, want to partner with him, want to, his patent. One guy wanted to partner with him, and it's like, I, I don't do partnerships. And, but there was this one guy who looks really, really familiar, the actor, he wanted to buy the patent. And this other, this other guy wants to buy the patent. So he ended up selling the patent for like a thousand dollars, I think. It turns out that they were, that they were, were actually partners, that the, he was in on it. So his, I don't do partnerships was a bunch of bull. Now, when he first gave that um, knowing smile, when the guy said, I'll give you a thousand, I honestly thought this whole thing was a front. You know, the stuttering, the everything. But no, no, he's just a con man. Um, Loki and Mobius are run trying to run after Victor Timely. And, and Renslayer, he, of course, is immediately taken in by Renslayer because she is a beautiful woman, so. And, um, so he, 
he run literally runs into someone who's dressed like Abe Lincoln. And he is not happy that Loki ran into him. Now, before this, Mobius and him were, Mobius was, they found the, the kid with the newspaper, and it said something about a ghost clock, and it's like, bingo, we found Miss Minutes. And they were going around to different exhibits in the World's Fair because Mobius wanted to have some fun. And one of the exhibits they went to was a Norse exhibit, which had Balder, Odin, and Thor. And Loki was a little perturbed that he wasn't there. Which, yeah, that checks out with Loki. So they had some fun with that. But, so he meets up with Abe Lincoln. Well, he literally runs into Abe Lincoln. And, well, someone dressed like him. And, um, he says, let's take this outside. So, Loki's like, okay. <laughs> so he, he magics him into a cage outside. And, um, you knew that this was going to happen. Now, Mobius was like, the amazing Loki, everyone, and everyone's just clapping. It's like, how is nobody wondering? <laughs> how is everyone just eating this up? I mean, they see a cartoon clock, and they don't, they get scared, but they don't question that. Wait, why? This is a cartoon clock. What the heck? Of course, this was the early, you know, late 19th century, so maybe they didn't know what animation was, so they didn't even have that working for them. But, um, you know, instead of saying, wait a minute, that's a cartoon, what, what is going on here? So, um... <sighs> There, Victor Timely and Ravona are running one way. And Mobius and Loki are chasing after them. Because, of course, they were, they were held up by Abe Lincoln. And um, so they're running, trying to find them. And Renslayer convinces T Victor Timely that you know, him and his Loki variant killed him in the future. So, you know, you can't trust him, you know, because, you know, Victor Timely even said, he saved me because they get onto the Ferris wheel and um, Sylvie tries to kill Victor Timely, number one. And Loki, this time, manages to protect Victor Timely, unlike the He Who Remains part version at the end of time, where Sylvie manages to get rid of Loki. This didn't happen this time. He um, manages to save Victor Timely. So he isn't completely sold on this, idea he still has no idea what's going on but he agrees to take them to his shop in Wisconsin to get his the actual stuff he needs in his lab because they were surprised by now he's not actually from Chicago you you think that Miss Minutes who's this all-powerful AI and is in control of all of time would know that little detail about about Kang. But anyway. So they 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 leave on a steamboat. And this is where things go completely sideways. So they're all chatting at um on the on the um outside of the ship. 
on the um, walkway. And they're chatting, and it looks like they have, that there's instant chemistry between Renslayer and Victor Timely. And at first I thought that Miss Minutes was just like, ew, gross. Simply because, you know, ew, feelings. But no, it became pretty obvious by the end of this that she was jealous. Because when, um... She mentioned that she has a good feeling about this partnership. Victor Timely removed his finger. And Miss Minutes was very happy about what was happening. So as she's sleeping in one of the life lifeboats, Victor um, cuts, cuts the rope. At least I think it was him. And Miss Minute stays behind and she's saying, well, she said partnership, you know, so obviously you don't want her around and yeah. So they, so Renslayer decides to row the boat, which this, this chick must be super strong because I don't know where they were in the lake when when this happened. So, obviously, you know, it's quite a rowboat ride to from wherever they were to Wisconsin. We don't know where in Wisconsin. And, um... So she she gets there along around the same time as Mobius and Loki to save Victor Timely because he finds what he's looking for. And then Miss Minutes goes on this nice talk about how, you know, that she was he created her before the TVA to play chess and how wonderful he is and how she's just bummed that she doesn't have a body, that he made her the way she is, because, you know, they can't actually get together. And Victor Timely is just like, oh, crap, this is just bad. So he manages to get the temp pad and make her disappear into the temp pad before she has a chance of actually doing anything as she's about to profess her love for him. So, um, at that moment, um, Ravona Renslayer comes and you can see she's a little disheveled. It was a really, um, piss poor showing of her being disheveled. I mean, you can see that her hair is kind of out of place, that it's not all, well, not completely well-kempt, but it's not what I would call disheveled. I mean, she wasn't dirty. Her hair was mostly in place. Um, It, it just, yeah. But she has this device which is another prototype of his, which um, I heard was the prototype of the pruning rod. And she's using it to threaten Victor Timely because she, she of course, thinks it was completely his idea to, to let it go. And let's face it, when he was watching her um, drift away, he, it did seem like it was totally him. But considering Miss Minutes said, well, she did say partnership after all, leads me to believe she convinced him. So, um, Renslayer is a, looking like she wants to hurt Victor Timely for what he did, which I can't completely blame her for this, but um, 
Loki and Mobius come, and Mobius is trying to talk Renslayer down, just like he did at the World's Fair, trying to convince her to, you know, work together, blah, blah, blah. And like I said, she claimed, she told Ren, she told Victor Timely that she needs his help to save the TVA by, um, by repairing the time loop. She knew none of that and with before Mobius told her. So she's threatening Victor Timely, and you can see that Loki is getting ready to freeze her to prevent her from harming Victor Timely. And um, Mobius is trying to talk her down. She talks about how the TVA went um, off the rails when she left and how the TVA needs her. And, um, and I'm like, then why did you leave? And um, how she's the epitome of order and she hates chaos and blah, blah, blah. So she um she looks like she's a so Loki looks like he's about to stop her but then suddenly there's this wave of green magic and not from Loki it's from Sylvie she once again is trying to kill Victor Timely so um when Loki comes to, he sees Sylvie approaching Victor Timely, and Victor Timely manages to convince her that he's not that guy that she cl she claims to hate. You know, that he's not interested in creating the TVA, he's not interested in ruling time, you know, that his heart is in the right place. And I'm like, Dude, you're a con artist. Which is why it's like, um, it's possible he's going to help them, but that's more of a self-preservation thing, because as Loki mentioned to Sylvie, um, the first time she tried to kill Victor Timely, that they need him to repair the time loom and protect the TVA, because if they don't, her reality, the one that she chooses to live in, will go poof. You know, none of it will will um, survive. So, you'd think that she'd listen to that. I mean, that's a really good reason why not to kill him. Why they need to... Um, why they need to protect the time loom. But she is... So filled with rage that she refuses to see what's in front of her face. They told her, I mean, like I said last episode, most of the members of the TVA were devastated to see what General Dox, which we saw absolutely nothing of in this episode, was doing. The TVA, the members of the TVA. And then, and now with the time loom, Loki trying to talk sense into Sylvie. It's like, she's so filled with rage with what the previous iteration of the TVA did that she refuses to accept that they could change. So, but Victor Timely manages to convince her that he's not that guy. And it's possible he won't become that guy because, but you know, the, the he, he who remains at the end of time, I mean, he'd been alive for millions of years. Ravona Renslayer even mentioned that she's been alive for eons. So it's entirely possible that he could turn into that version, that that's still a, that's still a possibility. Or it could be that he's conning her. But at the same time, they kind of need him for this one thing. And the fact that Sylvie is being so stubborn and so irrational. But she finally relents 
tells them to get him out of there. So they tell him to walk through the time portal, which, like I said, how is it nobody's questioning the weirdness of all of this? You know, Victor Timely isn't questioning the fact that there's um, two Norse gods, which are variants of each other, who are trying to hunt him down. I mean, how is nobody saying, wait, what is going on? This is just too weird. I mean, he kind of did, but he walked through the portal. He didn't ask questions. He just did it. But I guess at this point, he was like, I want to get away from the crazy lady. So... So he walks through. I assume we'll uh, pick up with him next episode. So Sylvie sets her sights on Renslayer. And she threatens Renslayer. And Renslayer assumes that Sylvie was going to kill her. She's like, I've dreamt about killing you many, many times. Each time more brutal than the time before. But I'm not going to do that because I am, you know, I'm not going to go down that route again. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you what you want and you're going to regret it. Well, she did say that, you know, you better be careful what you wish for. You might regret it, but same thing. So she sends her to the end of time. And I assume Sylvie went back to her branch timeline. So they're at the end of time. And she's seeing this, the Citadel that's falling apart. And a, a skeleton, a decomposing body of he who remains, Kang. So she lets out Miss Minutes, and so she, Miss Minutes finishes her sentence because she was, you know, trying to tell Victor Timely that she loves him. And so she sees Renslayer, and she sees where she is, and she's like, oh, that's embarrassing. And it's like, it's okay. I don't think she, she got the hint because she doesn't seem to have a problem with Miss Minutes. I don't know why. Did she really think that Miss Minutes was um, defenseless to stop Victor Timely from cutting her loose? I'm not sure what why she's totally cool with Miss Minutes still, especially with the last words that first word she said when she was released was "love you." I mean, obviously that was not meant for Renslayer. So, anyway. So, Miss Minutes now hates Victor Timely. And she said, "It you know, you shouldn't make an enemy of someone who knows all your secrets. And, um, the question is, does she? Because he's already established that he's not like he who remains. Now, it's entirely possible that there's enough similarities that it doesn't matter. But it also is possible that what she thinks are Victor Timely's secrets aren't. They, because he would never go down this path. Or maybe he's going to help Mobius and Loki and all of them um, fix the time loom and that will send him on the same path as he who remains. We don't know yet. But um, she said, she told Renslayer that she has this big secret that involves her that, you know, she could tell her, but that she would be so mad. So it's entirely possible that it could be confirming that she's a variant and what her life was like before Kang kidnapped her or it could just simply be that he's been wiping her mind because she didn't know about he who remains until the very end 
Um, it could be that they were in a relationship before. Who knows? Something that's going to tick her off. So, Miss Minutes seems like she's going to be the villain. Now, how long she's going to remain with Renslayer, because Renslayer seems to be on Team Miss Minutes right now. I wonder how long before that that pairing goes belly up. Because right now they both dislike Victor Timely. So, there's no more love triangle. Thank God. Long-time viewers of my channel will know that I'm just not a fan, generally, of love stories. Love stories, if it's done right, fine. But love triangles, absolutely not. Never in a million years will I like love triangles. Those are just drama for drama's sake, and I can't stand them. But, um, so probably next episode... We're going to see Victor Timely attempting to help them fix the time loop. And they just kept talking about he has the same aura as he who remains. So that just his aura is going to help them. How that's going to help them because apparently you need a password? I don't know. But apparently that's all it takes. Just find someone who has the same aura as he who remains. Um, let's see if I missed anything. Um, hmm. Oh, when, um, when that guy who got suckered into giving him a thousand dollars for a patent, um... What exactly did Loki do to them? Because you saw a puff of green smoke, but it didn't look like they had, you know, anything bad happened. I mean, they were running away, but I didn't see any negative effects unless it was just to scare them. That Loki has magic. So, um, let's see if there's anything else I'm missing. Um, hmm. All I know about, it seems like this ep, this um, season is generally going to be about fixing the time loop. Or maybe they fix it next episode and then they have to deal with another threat. Because I've seen trailers where... Loki and Sylvie are back to working together. So, I don't know. Maybe they... Next episode is going to be like the mid-season finale where they fix... Where they um finish the, the this part of the, the... This story arc. And then they're going to go to the next one. Because I doubt it's just a four-episode season. Um, I don't know. Is it this eight episodes, Loki? I don't know. But anyway, with that, I believe I've covered everything from this episode. And I will see you guys in the next one.